Good morning. I want to welcome everybody to this third Sunday of Lent. It's a beautiful day out there. Sun's shining. We had a little frost this morning, but I'll tell you what, that frost didn't last long, did it, with that sun shining like it is. So I just hope everybody has a wonderful day today. And if you think about and thank God for this beautiful day, you will, definitely. Uh, opportunities for the week is um, we'll be getting together soon to start work on a choir on Sundays for special music. I was heading for that. Next Sunday at 4. That's when we're going to have choir practice. Um, lay leadership opportunities. We have openings for a senior club coordinator and a lay delegate to the annual conference. If you are interested in one or both of these positions, please let Joyce or Rev Bev uh, know about it. Um, Bible study is Wednesday at 6.30. And just for everybody's information, I'll be teaching that day, so don't let that stop you from coming, okay? <laughs> Food pantry is Thursday, uh, 10 till 2. Is there any other um, or any other things that I've missed? Announcements? Okay, if none, Beth, would you uh, please open with a word of prayer? Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks for a new day. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for each one that made the choice to be here this morning, for we know that there are choices out there. And these made the choice to be in your presence and in your house today. Lord, we ask that you would accept our worship and praise that everything that is said and done this morning might be to your honor and glory. But we ask all these things in the name of the Christ. Amen. Let's stand and sing Old Rugged Cross.
On this third Sunday during Lent, we reflect upon the walls we build between God and ourselves and others by our disobedience to God's call for justice and commitment. God's laws and direct direction call us into a better world where all people are valued. Sometimes we are even disobedient when we do the letter of the law but neglect the spirit in which God commands it. Obedience has a cost for us, and sometimes we judge that cost too high. We are called to a right relationship with God and each other. Responding to this call is not always easy. Jesus challenged the money changers. Sometimes doing what is right upsets others. As we extinguish the third candle, let us also extinguish our disobedience toward God. Let us pray. God, you have given us the challenge of following your law. Sometimes we need to be angry with injustice and wrong. Sometimes following your way makes others angry with us. Open our eyes that we may know your will and give us the strength to follow you and to serve one another. Amen. Our prayer time, the prayer list, long term. Tommy and Deborah Shepherd, Betsy Fitz Witt, Wes Moy, Barbara Knight, Merlene Gay Lackey, Johnny Webb, Brenda Howell, Bill Alford, Mary Helen Tapley, Gene Yates. His uh, surgery is going to be when, Nellie? Wednesday the 10th, Gene's going to have surgery, and that's for his back, right? Helen Durden, Lynn Thomas, Ruby Cooper, and Burnett Wilt Watson. And I'm sure term, short term is Brandon Rogers, Blake Galtney, Corey Giddens, Shirley Copeland, and Helen Peel. Feel. Pardon me? Oh, Carolyn. Okay. Carolyn File. Family of Paul Hudson, Jr., Hugh Baxter, Kevin Goldman, Phyllis Popovich Proctor, Ronalda. Screws, Sharon Lord, Larry Powell, Helen D. Dean, Helen Dean, Fridas Brown, Louise Fountain, Kathy Demick, Earl Miller, Edna Kaiser. Anyone else we need to add to the list? Helen Osborne, anyone else? Kelly Wilson? Anyone else? If not, Beverly, would you say a prayer, please? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy and most gracious God, we come this morning with grateful hearts for the many answers we see to our prayers. Lord, you're good to us. You show your love for us every day. Your mercies are new every morning. And we give you thanks and praise and honor. And now, Father, we lift these up who still have needs. Father, the sick, the bereaved, Lord, those that need to just feel your presence, to know that they are not alone. Father, we pray for each and every one that is homebound through this time of COVID-19 and flu season and so much more. We just pray for those who are isolated, who are lonely, 
who need encouragement. And Lord, we just ask that you would move in our hearts, that we might follow the Holy Spirit's lead and, and touch one of those lives, even at a distance. Lord, it doesn't cost us anything to make a phone call. Lord, we are all still capable of dropping a note to someone just to say, I'm thinking of you during this time. Father, forgive us where we fail, where we don't heed those nudges of the Holy Spirit to make those phone calls and drop those cards, and where we don't try to make a difference in the lives of others. So forgive us where we fail you, whether it's through omission or commission. And Father, walk with us and show us a better way. And now with the confidence of children of God, we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sing to God be the glory. Sorry. Stand, please. things. 
her speak this morning. Gail? Thank you, Rev. Bev. The title of my sermon today is Fear, Faith, and Feet. According to David Cook's explanation on page 91 of June, July, and August 2020, many faces of wisdom. God who created an orderly universe. It is not the cause of all the confusion we see in the world. And neither is he the source of this world's evil. Confusion and every manner evil comes from when people follow after the devil and his worldly ways with envy, selfish ambition on full display. Apart from Christ, disorder and evil will reign. Now you may ask yourself, why would Miss Gale choose fear as a subject for a sermon? Fear is an other tool that the devil uses to manipulate us to make the wrong choices in life. For a year now, we have been through many frightening occurrences with the COVID-19 virus. Because of this ban pandemic, we have had to, adopt, to adapt to many life changes. Some have lost loved ones, some have lost jobs, and some have lost homes. Some have become housebound as a safety precaution. Being isolated can cause altering effects. Gaining weight become because of stress eating. Fighting bouts of depression due to lack of activity. Fighting thoughts from dominating us through lack of sleep and wondering, what if conjecture resulting in the worst case scenario? And like you, some grieve for our loved ones who have passed on, knowing that they could not sit by their side and comfort it, nor were they allowed to have the visitation, only services at the graveside. The society, the social custom we use to observe not only comfort the grieving, but gives us mean to show our love in caring for those most affected. The only method of reaching out available to some of us has been sending out cards with messages of encouraging, some through snail mail as they call the current postal system. There are some days that we feel we are holding on by a thread. Personally, I love and miss, missed my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. They are the only family I have here. Thank goodness for Jake's ability to connect us through the internet. I am so glad that we, now, we can now attend our church for Sunday school, for church services, and for a Wednesday night Bible study. We are now adjusting to our new normal. Now let us define our fears, acknowledge their impact on our lives, and determine to allow God to help us overcome our fears. Fear is an emotional response to our environment or other things within our environment. It is healthy when we use it as a means of self-preservation to move forward cautiously or with self-restraint. It only becomes dominant in our life when we start to develop extreme reactions called phobia. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, 8% of all the adults have some type of phobia. And ladies, forgive me, but this is what they said. And women are more likely to experience them. I suggest this is because women are more inclined to be intuitive. Some typical symptoms of phobia are nausea, trembling, rapid heartbeat, feeling of unreality, and being preoccupied with the fear object. There are far too many here to list, but let me give you a few examples. There are four categories. First one is of the natural environment, astrophobia, fear of lightning, hydrophobia, fear of water, dentrophobia, it's not of dandruff, it's fear of trees, fear related to animals, caninophobia, 
fear of dogs. Equinophobia, afraid of horses. Bactocrophobia, which comes on the listing of lizards, geckos, newts, and cal uh, chameleons. Fear of mutilation and medical treatment. Trypanophobia, can anyone figure out what that one is? It's fear of needles, which I share, unfortunately. Dentrophobia, many of us share that one too, dentists. And hemophobia, fear of blood. And then there's a fear of situations. Claustrophobia, we all know that one, small spaces. Aerophobia, afraid of airplanes and flying. And glossophobia, speaking in public. You may recognize some of these fears as your own. How we react to, the, react to them and to what degree determines our ability to function in our day-to-day -day life. Someone startled or frightened choose to stand and fight, slap, kick, or punch, or push. Some choose to run. We usually think, feet don't fail me now, or we jump back or fall back, and others freeze temporarily, st standing still, or long-term self-imposed isolation. Now this is nothing new. In Numbers 1, we are told of Moses sending spies to scout out Canaan. They return with negative reports. In Number 13, 20, we are told that the people who that the people who live there are powerful, the cities are fortified, and they are very large. We saw descendants in Anak. Anak is a, a tribe of giants, something like Goliath. Numbers 44 tells us that hearing this, all the congregation rose a loud cry, and the people wept that night, even in the face of God's assurance that God was with them. Now keep in mind that God was with them as a cloud by day and a flame by night, so he was literally with them. Their fear won out. This kept them from entering the land that God had promised, the land of milk and honey. And they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Now there is a good fear. It's a fear of God that encourages us to love respect, and follow God's commandments. My point is, we can choose to let our fears take over our lives, or we can move forward in faith. Now we come to the faith part. Fellow Christians, where is your faith? Do you remember the definition? It's in Hebrew 11.1. 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and insurance about what we do not see. We as Christians are gifted with hope. We have hope. Matthew 17, 20. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. If your faith has weakened over the past year, go to God in prayer for, from him to increase your faith. Even the apostles asked for increase in faith. In Luke 17, fine, they wanted greater faith to lay hold of the power to line up with Jesus' standards. They wanted to have the same gifts that Jesus had said they had, to raise the dead, to heal the sick. They needed to pray to God for more faith. God has told us that Isaiah 46, 4, and I love this one because it, it mentions my gray hair, which until then I didn't consider a blessing. Even in your old age and gray hair, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. Our, our affirmation of faith should include Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, I praise him. And as many of you know, I love to sing. 
And because I've had a real bad bout this year with asthma, I no longer have the voice I used to. But I'm still singing. You just don't hear me anymore. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through the Lord who gives me strength. The commentary for this verse states that Christ is the secret to being content and the source of abiding strength. Deuteronomy 31.8 tells us, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Now, how do we put feet on our faith? I don't, you can't vision it literally, but by feet I mean the ability to move forward. James 2.14 tells us, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? And deeds without love are useless. 1 Corinthians 13.2 says, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all my mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. Feet are connected to our legs by our ankles. Their primary purpose is to balance us when we stand up and help us to move forward. How do we move forward in this time of the new normal? First, we abide by our present day social requirements. We, are, we wear masks in public. We observe the six fit separation rule. We get two COVID shots and a booster if necessary. And we remain calm. For those of you who are, are confined to home, if you have the capability on your computer through the internet, and I just thought of this, this morning because I don't have the capability to, on my computer, it's just a word processor, to actually read it, reach out and speak face to face. Call someone during a quiet time. Tell them that God has put it in your heart to reach out to them and to pray for them. And ask them to pray for you as well. You know these are difficult times and you want them to know that you care about them. Now look them in the eye and pay attention to the facial expression. We are told to keep in mind that you have two ears and one mouth. Hear with your heart and try to keep them calm. Pray to God to install them with the Holy Spirit, to give them wisdom, to give them strength, and above all, to give them love. If you only have a phone, pick up your phone. Do not email text, or send emojis. Actually call a person and listen to with your ears and heart and mind to tell you by the sound of their voice that they are lonely, frightened, or confused. Tell them that God has put it in your heart to reach out to them, to pray for them. Again, ask them for prayers for you as well. You'll know these are difficult times and you want them to know that you care about them. Third, Find a cheerful card and write an encouraging message. Try to include a Bible verse and mail it to them. Remember to not only include the ill, but their caregivers as well. They too need our prayers and an uplifting message. Now you're gonna say, why a card? That's kind of an old fashioned way. But this gives the recipient something to hold on to and to an opportunity to bring out and reread as needed. I know this year I received several cards and when I was having a bad day, I would go through the cards and reread the messages. And I found them uplifting and encouraging. And even though you may send a message on your phone, you and I know you gotta clean out that every so often or your phone gets bogged down. And you never know when this person is gonna to wanna to reach out and read the message again. Please, I encourage you to try to remember the basic courtesies your parent tried to teach you as children. Now, I'm 77, I'm an old fashioned woman. I believe in the pleases and the thank you. I think they go a long way. 
So use please and thank you whenever possible. Be kind and thoughtful and treat others as you would like them to treat you. Ephesians 4.29 tells us, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. When you can, come as close as possible to your pre-COVID-19 lifestyle. Go back to church. Support your church. Attend Sunday school. Attend church services. And attend Bible study. You're never too old to learn and listen and hear God's word. Continue to make prayer shawls or lap covers. Support your missions local and far away. Know that Gethsemane United Methodist Church Food Pantry is up and running every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for all of Lawrence County. Our, our services... If you know anyone who has need of our services, please send them to us. We are located in the building across the street called Rock Solid on the back side of it. We have been there for six years since March 5th, 2015. We have served amazingly 24,585 individuals. And over the last year, we did 3,000, and which is pretty impressive because we were down for 11 weeks. We are made up of nine people five from Gethsemane United, three from Allentown United Methodist, and one from Wesley Chapel. Anyone with the proper Christian attitude is welcome to help us with this mission. Presently, we, we have procedures in place to keep you from coming in contact with each other and our clients for obvious safety reasons. In conclusion, fear. When the going gets tough, Get tough, get going. Faith, it is a confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. We have hope. And feet, well, they're not like boots who are made for walking, but they're made to help us to move forward in Christ. That concludes my message. Thank you, Gail. Let's stand and sing our closing song, the Spirit Song.
now receive the benediction. May the grace of God our Father, the love of Christ His Son, and the communion of the sweet Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and equip you for another week of ministry. For it is in the holy name of the Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you. Love one another.